the national lockdown by a further two weeks. As we come to the expiry of that period, it is not worth that the number of COVID-19 positive cases, fatalities, and hospitalization continue to steadily decrease. We must, however, remain alert and on guard to maintain this positive momentum attained so far. Government has rolled out of the first phase of the national COVID-19 vaccination program, which targets the frontline workers, security sector, and the members of the media, the elderly, and those with underlying conditions. I would like to once again reassure the nation that more vaccines are coming and the people will have the opportunity to be vaccinated. As government, we are pleased with the positive response from the targeted groups. The overwhelming number of inquiries from those outside the first phase target groups is encouraging as they indicate their desire to vaccinate. While the vaccination program is voluntary, let us remain mindful of the need to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and the entire nation. The dissemination of factual information on the efficacy of the vaccines will be increased across all media platforms. On behalf of the government and the people of Zimbabwe, I once again express my profound gratitude to the President of the People's Republic of China, His Excellency Xi Jinping, and the government and people of China for the additional donation of 200,000 doses of vaccines made to Zimbabwe just last week. This generous gift will greatly contribute to our quest to achieve herd immunity. Over and above the combined total of 400,000 donated doses, another 600,000 doses of Chinese vaccine will be arriving in the coming weeks. A further 1,2 million doses have also been availed by Chinese companies for Zimbabwe. I equally express our gratitude to Russia, India, the United Kingdom, we have pledged donations of various vaccines. The vaccination will be administered for free. Private entities and organizations who want to procure the vaccines for their staff or members must be prepared to distribute the vaccine for free. Government will not allow any form of profiteering from the vaccination program. As the above vaccination program is underway, let us continue to minimize the risk of spikes in the number of cases by adhering to the World Health Organization pub health protocols and the additional preventive measures announced by government from time to time. Going forward, the following review is made to previously announced lockdown measures. 
One, the wearing of face masks, temperature checks, as well as washing of hands or use of sanitizers in all public areas remains mandatory. Two, the curfew is adjusted and it will now be from 10 p.m. to 5.30 in the morning. Letters are no longer required for movement. Three, supermarkets can now remain open up to 7 p.m. to reduce congestion and they must enforce social distancing within their premises. Four, industry to open with strict adherence to World Health Organization set standards and the national COVID-19 guidelines as such. The regular disinfection of premises, social distancing, and sanitization and the use of body temperature checks at entrances will continue. Non-compliance in this regard will attract targeted closures of such entities. As per the previous announcement, SMEs, food markets, and the informal sectors can reopen on condition that they strictly adhere to the World Health Organization set standards and the national COVID-19 guidelines. Five, education. Schools must prepare to open and they put in place measures which observe the World Health Organization protocols and the national COVID-19 guidelines. Virtual learning or long distance learning is encouraged where possible. Universities and colleges must also prepare to open and ensure compliance with the World Health Organization protocols and the national COVID-19 guidelines. Virtual learning or long distance learning is equally encouraged where possible. Non-compliance to the above requirements will attract targeted closures of the respective institutions. Six, intercity travel can now resume. Bus operators must, however, ensure the disinfection of their buses, wearing of masks, temperature checks, and sanitization of passengers. Social gathering, funeral gatherings to remain at 30 people. Other social gatherings shall not exceed 50 people. Restaurants can open only for takeaways and deliveries, no sit-ins. Beer halls, Mabawa. Bars, nightclubs, gymnasiums remain closed. Bottle stores must strictly operate takeaways as required by the law. A statutory instrument will outline in detail the above measures. Allow me to conclude by urging all of us to remain focused, responsible and united as we continue on our national journey to grow the economy and improve the quality of life of all the people of our beloved country. God bless you all. God bless Babu. I thank you.